When it comes to Gravity Falls, there's likely three things that everyone knows about it. Bill Cipher, Alex Hirsch, and the many codes found throughout the show. The cryptograms in Gravity Falls were always one of the most anticipated aspects of the show and helped keep fans engaged and give them a sense of participation within the series' run. Any old fan will tell you that solving the codes at the end credits were always the most rewarding when you cracked it yourself and when the episode was brand new. And every code always would, as you know, provide some clues to what was going to happen next in the show or just be a fun little gag in regards to the events of the episode. And the codes varied too, originally starting with the usage of the Caesar cipher, hence and then later the Atbash and the A1Z26 ciphers. And as you know, come season 2, the show moved to the Visioner cipher where there would be a key hidden in the episode that fans had to find in order to decode the message, as well as combined ciphers where you'd have to use two or more codes to decrypt something. As fans got better at solving codes, the crew got sneakier with how they hid them to make it harder for fans to solve. One famous example is how in The Love God, the key needed to decrypt the end credit code was spread out over the course of the chase scene between the twins and the love god, and with the hopes that it would take fans a while to decode it. It was solved only minutes after the episode came out. I didn't think anyone would ever be able to find him. Sure enough, 10 minutes after the episode aired, somebody had cracked it. It only took me 15 seconds. There's many cases of hard or multi-step codes found throughout the series, and even more so in the books. Some notable examples include Blendon's letter in Journal 3, the various other codes in it, the Time Pirates treasure code that takes you to the Exolotl page or at least did if you lived in the United States and now it doesn't even work to begin with, the special edition exclusive codes, and many more. But the thing with all these codes is that they're often only one step or two step codes, meaning you either only need to decode them twice or it's a code that takes you to somewhere else to view the bonus material. They're not too complicated and only need one item to decode, which in these cases are either the episode itself or one book in which you can find the code and the key. Except for one. There is one set of codes found in a piece of Gravity Falls media that is so insanely complex to solve, not because the code itself is hard to crack, but the steps and items one needs in order to do so. Let me explain. This code is found in the most recent GF book to come out, Lost Legends. Yes, I know the bedtime book is newer, but we refuse to acknowledge its existence like Columbia Productions refuses to acknowledge that Gravity Falls is never coming back. Anyways, Lost Legends contained a ton of codes in it like any GF book, written in various ciphers. Some reveal interesting bits of lore, some are pop culture references, some exist for fun, and some… yeah. But within all the codes, there's this one found on the table of contents page of the book. This code cannot be cracked with Caesar or Atbash, meaning it's a Visionaire cipher. But what's the key? Well, across Lost Legends, you'll find a series of strange, almost meaningless codes that don't correlate with anything. I mean, almost every code has some greater context to it, but four. The first code can be found on the roof of the shack in this page on Face It. It's written in Bill's Symbol Substitution Cipher, which is a Gravity Falls exclusive kind of code that, as the name suggests, was invented by Bill himself. In almost every GF book and episode from season 2 onwards, there are several codes found using this cipher. Following along to the method by which you decrypt it, you learn that this cipher decodes to say, to find. The next code is found on page 51 in Com Mix Up. At the bottom of this page where the gang is dealing with the marvel of slapstick humor, there's a series of dots and dashes, and you don't need to be a wireless operator on the RMS Titanic to know that it's Morse code. Using any off-the-shelf Morse code decoder, it decodes to say, a spider. But we're not done yet. On page 95 in Don't Dimension It, there's a single line of code seen in the background on a box inside the interdimensional truck that Ford and Stan are in to find Mabel. Again, it's in the Bill Cipher cipher, and decoded to say, search. Finally, on page 118 in the Stan and Ford story, there's this code seen in the middle of one of the rings at the circus. It's also using the same previous Bill Cipher, and decodes to say, the web. Combine the four codes together, and you get the following sentence. To find a spider, search the web. On its own, this means nothing, as there are no spiders to be found in Lost Legends or a web. Plus, why on earth would anyone want to find a spider unless you're really trying to become Spider-Man? Well, remember that code I mentioned above that was found on the table of contents that has no clear way to be decoded? 
Well, as fans figured out back in the day, if you take the code, then take the sentence we just decoded and use it as the key in the Visionaire cipher, you get this. Shmebu unlocked. All of that work to decode this one message found at the very start of the book. That in itself is a pretty complicated code to crack, but what if we take it a step further? What does it mean? Well, Lost Legends is told by Shmebulok the gnome, and at face value this looks like it's hinting at something more that he has hidden for us to find. We've unlocked something, but what? Well, let's look at the key that we used to solve this again. What if there's more that we can obtain from it? The first part states to find a spider, and as we know this hunt in itself was pretty hard to find which means it was a hard code to crack. So in a way I guess we could say we found the spider here so to speak, which is this code. But the second part, search the web. What if it doesn't mean web as in a spider web, but as in the web? Search the web. If you search the web for the phrase Shmebu unlocked, you'll come across this. A website within the Disney website that is called Shmebu Unlocked. And at the start of it, you have the following greeting by Shmebulok himself. Greetings, paranoid, antisocial code cracker of the internet. If you are here, that means you, like me, have an insatiable thirst for the secrets of Gravity Falls. Welcome to my private study, or stockatorium, where I collect my most elusive files. By all means, creep around to your heart's content. Shmebulok. What we have here is the fruits of the labor of figuring out this code. Shmebu Unlocked is a website that contains a ton of bonus material and tie-in material for Lost Legends. It's a tie-in website for a graphic novel. Below you'll find a bookshelf on which there are 10 books facing towards you. Clicking on any of them will take you to another page on which you can find an information card that talks about a character or item that was featured in Lost Legends. From these, we've learned a ton of interesting info about the characters like how Shmebulok is banned from Greasy's Diner, Pacifica likes deep fried food and is secretly an epic gamer, Anti Ford is a YouTuber and DJ while Anti Stan is a hippie, good god, that donates to charity, Philbrick Pines worked as a construction worker once, and that Trembly actually ate the president's key but coughed it out to give it to Dipper, which is kinda gross. There's also this Mad Max looking artwork found in one book, and in another is a series of Gravity Falls comics that pay homage to legendary comic strips like Garfield, Family Circus, Marmaduke, and more. Plus in one panel we have Dipper saying Cypher lives in Caesar, which you may want to keep in mind. Now all of this is a pretty cool reward for decoding all the codes in Lost Legends to find this website, but what if I told you that getting here is just step one? Because on the 8 info cards that can be found on this website, you notice that on the sides of them, there's even more codes to be found. And these codes are also Visionaire. So you may be wondering now, how do you decode these ones as surely there'll be a key on the site to help you? But look as you may, you won't find one. Even if you try using a phrase or sentence on here, it won't work. Even the cipher lives code is useless as it's just a random code thrown in to probably make Mad Pat think that his film theory is true. So how do you decode this? Well, remember at the start of the video when I said how most codes found in Gravity Falls books can be cracked using only stuff found in the same book? Well here's the thing. These 8 codes cannot be cracked with anything found in Lost Legends or Shmebu Unlocked, or even the original codes that got us here. For that, we need to look at another piece of GF merchandise that came out around the same time as Lost Legends did. But there's only one other piece of GF merchandise that came out on July 24th, 2018 that fits the bill, pun intended. Gravity Falls, the complete series. As you'll all probably know, in 2018, Shout Factory released a Gravity Falls box set containing all 40 episodes and a ton of bonus material. To this day, it is one of the best pieces of GF merchandise ever made and provides fans with a ton of content that Disney Plus users will never experience. Now, when the box set came out, it had two variants. The Retail Edition and the Collector's Edition. It is important, as the Retail Edition only has 6 discs and just the commentaries as bonus features. 
On the other hand though, the collector's edition has the bells and whistles with a 7th bonus features disc. In here, you'll find all sorts of goodies like the shorts, old promos and skits made for the show during its run, deleted and behind the scenes looks, and more. It's a truly wonderful array of materials for any fan to enjoy. However, it also contains some secrets. When you watch the behind the scenes documentary film, One Crazy Summer, A Look Back at Gravity Falls, you'll notice something. Every time the documentary transitions to a new part in it, such as when the crew talks about casting or animation and more, there'll be this transition scene that tells you what the next part of it is going to be discussing, and below it, you'll notice a rather familiar looking code. This is another code written in the Bill Substitution Cipher, and there's a new code like this found in every transition and in the opening for the Hearst Twins mini documentary as well. When decoded, each code gives you a different sentence that states a direction and then where to do so, such as left at checkers, right at clock. You get the point. While it may not make sense at first, these are directions that you use within the bonus features disc to find easter egg clips. When you obtain a code, you then must follow it to figure out where to find a clip. For example, if you go to Mabel's Guide to Stickers and use your remote to select right on the disc, you'll see this little symbol appear at the top of the screen. If you then select it, you'll be able to watch one of the easter egg clips, a blooper reel from the documentary. Thank you. That makes it official. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm Kristen Shaw, voice of Mabel. <laughs> and I'm Jason Ritter, the voice of Dipper. And together, we're the stars of Gravity Falls. Gravity Falls. Together, we're, we're the, the stars, stars of Gravity, Gravity Falls. Falls. That is good. Did it. Bam. I apologize. <laughs> to the children of America. <laughs> Each word relates to a bonus feature under which you can find these secret clips on. So, for example, Checkers relates to one of the apocalypse prepping promos that Disney XD made starring McGucket. Tattoo is of course relating to Dipper's guide on Stan's tattoo. Zoo is the Mabel scrapbook short on the petting zoo, and more. In total, there are 12 easter egg clips which contain everything from Brad Brick talking about the theme song, Alex and the crew talking about aspects of the show, crew drawings, and more. But you may be asking, that's great. But what does this all have to do with decoding the codes on Shmebi Unlocked? Well, this is where it gets interesting, and this is even something I made a joke video about last year when I tried to make a fake old GF Theories video like how Velskiba made back in the day. You'll notice that while there are in total 12 secret clips, the documentary film only gives you hints to find 8 of them. The remaining 4 are ones you gotta find yourself, and luckily people have. I mean, it's been 5 years since the box set came out, so of course they will. Among these, there are three clips that featured the Dorito himself, Bill Cipher. One involves him talking about how you clicked on the wrong easter egg, and another has him singing. For he's a jolly good fellow, he's pointy and scary and yellow. For he's a jolly good fellow, and he only has one eye. But it's the third and final one that we're interested in. If you have the box set at home, you can find this clip by going to the Gravity Pause option and pressing the right arrow, and by the way, Gravity Pause was something Disney XD did where they remade the theme song using dogs. Anyways, when you press the letter, it'll take you to the third and final message from Bill, and well, I'll let you hear it. So yeah, he's speaking gibberish, eh? Well, as you know, if a GF character is speaking weirdly, you may want to play that scene again, but backwards. Of course, you obviously should not do that on your own DVD, so record it with like your phone or something, and then play backwards. If you do, you'll hear this. Oh hi friends, it's your own personal Lord and Master Bill Cipher with a hot tip for you. You might be navigating this universe looking for some kind of secret, some kind of big answer, some sort of underlying matrix underneath the entire thing that can make it all make sense. Well, I can't give you that, but I can give you something else. A code word. There's a message. 
message somewhere that could use this code to decode it. And that code is inside job. Don't say I never did anything for you. Bye! Inside job. Bill has given us a code word to decode a message somewhere. And yes, you may have noticed that the code word that he gave us is the name of the Netflix series made by GF writer Shion Takeuchi and with Alex Sir serving as an executive producer on it. Keep in mind that the box set came out in July of 2018, a month before Alex's deal with them and two months before Shion herself did. It's possible that this was an early hint to the series given it's likely Shion had a plan for the show and name for a while and with them both likely seen to join Netflix given their deals likely were in the works for a while before, it's likely this was not a coincidence and was something that was planned. It's just a guess, but I have a feeling this very much was a direct reference to Inside Job left in the box set. I mean, Lost Legends had easter eggs to the Owl House almost two years before it even came out. Side note, I was one of the first people to guess that, so bragging rights forever on that. And speaking of Lost Legends, Bill said that Inside Job is a code word that can help us to decode a message. And what message out there have we been trying to figure out a way to decode that requires a word to decode it? Yup, the key you need in order to decrypt the codes found on the side of the 8 info cards on shmebionlock.com is inside job. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's safe to say that this is the single most complex and multi-step Gravity Falls code that there has ever been. I don't even think that Cypher Hunt had anything this complicated and no, the puzzle doesn't count given fans technically cracked it before it was even completed. So. Let's do a fast rundown now of everything you need to do in order to decode the info card codes. First of all, you need to buy a copy of Lost Legends. From there, you access the main code via Lost Legends table of contents page. From there, you travel to pages 10, 51, 95, and 118 in the book to find four codes that you then need to decrypt using the bill substitution cipher and Morse code. That will give you the sentence to find a spider, search the web. Using that key, you will then decode the table of contents code with the Visionaire cipher to find it that it decodes to say, Shmebu Unlocked. Searching the web, you then find the Shmebu Unlocked website and from there you access the info cards and the codes. Then you need to buy the Gravity Falls Complete Series box set, specifically the Collector's Edition. Then, unless you choose to brute force your way by clicking left and right on your remote in each of the bonus features, watch the documentary film and use the Bill Cipher code again to decode all the codes there that will give you hints on how to find the easter egg clips. Once you've done that, and were brute forced your way to grab your paws, you select right on it and then watch the build backwards message which you'll have to likely do twice because you might forget to record it the first time. Once you do that, you reverse the video and the audio to hear what Bill said. Finally, once you know that the code is inside job, you can finally now go and use it to decrypt all of the 8 info card codes with the Visionaire cipher. And what awaits you when you decode all the cards after doing all of that? <laughs> Well, well it's this. The true meaning of Shmebulok. Such horror as men endure. Blind universe laughing. Only cure? Kindness. The Sib bros were stalked by unemployed dock worker Jenkins W. Jenkins, who turned their exploits into cheap, terrible novels that were enjoyed by all. Favorite movie? Face Off. Or Face Slash Off. Got a waitress job at Greasy's Diner after the summer ended. Thinks about the Pines twins every day. Some say the anti-Bill is a very polite purple square who whispers believe in yourself to people while they sleep. He is very boring. There are at least six ghosts left in Northwest Mansion. Tate and Fids are working on a machine to bust them. Never wiped number one dad off his gold chain. Triggers and powers are still looking for it. So, yeah. Just a bit of additional info on the characters and little facts and stuff here and there. It's great to know, but not anything major that will change the show, except perhaps the fact that McGuckin and his son are now bonding, which is sweet. But, yeah. That, in my opinion, is the most complicated Gravity Falls code to crack. It not only takes a lot of time and effort to crack, but also requires you to own two pieces of GF merch instead of one book like others do. And even then, most fans likely will not be able to given the box that was only available to buy in Canada and the US, and isn't even sold anymore because it was discontinued earlier this year. Of course, thanks to the wiki page and combined work of fans, all these ciphers can be easily accessed, so if you can't get the box set, you can still read the codes. 
If you think about it, it was in its own way, a great way to end Gravity Falls' run. Lost Legends gave us 4 new stories and new codes to crack and with the help of the box set they gave us new content, provided us with the most complex series of steps needed to crack a single code. What's also fascinating to me is how long ago it's been. Lost Legends and the box set are now 5 years old. I still remember the wait for them in 2018, and 5 times the amount of that time has now passed. Hell, is it even worth saying Lost Legends has 4 all new stories in it? when all those stories have now been out for longer than the show itself was on air for? Time is a very crazy thing. It can pass in the blink of an eye, make memories fade, heal old wounds, and muddy stories pass down through the ages. But it's always a constant that we all gotta deal with. In a way, it's kinda of fitting that, like childhood itself, which it was a story about, Gravity Falls is now a part of the past as well, with folks like me looking back on it now. I was living the moment then, but now I too have become nostalgic for a time in Gravity Falls' life, and I wasn't even in the fandom when the show itself was airing new episodes. It's strange to think about. But with that said, this is the story of arguably the most complicated Gravity Falls code. It may not be as time consuming as Blunden's letter, or requiring of scene analysis like some episode codes were, but to me, it is still one of the craziest and well put together codes to come out of the show, and a fitting way to mark the end of an era because with Alex now bounded with his Netflix deal and Disney lo no longer as interested in the, this kind of show anymore as it once was, this crazy code from a book and a box set that came out 5 years ago may just be Gravity Falls' final great hunt. A fitting code to end one mysterious and weird legacy. But with that said, thank you for watching and uh, bye. Oh, and here's a little interesting thing I learned about Alex Search's Netflix show, by the way. It turns out that he's actually...